You know, we can all relate, I think, to having been mothered, at least by someone at some point in our lives, whether it was our own mothers or not. We know what it feels like to be cared for, to be nurtured, to be held, to be loved. And there are probably times in our life we also can relate to the idea of being motherless, the idea that, you know, we feel a, a hunger for that kind of care, that kind of nurturance, that kind of kindness that can, that can be offered to us, that we can offer to one another. So on this Mother's Day, I was thinking about Brenly tell, telling me a story of, well, not telling me a story, but over time just witnessing her really, seeing her in her work as a therapist and before that as a case manager. And over time she's worked with um, a lot of different kinds of clients, but usually it's involved some uh, of, of the addiction medicine field. And she's had some really tough folks that she's worked with, some clients that her coworkers didn't, I had a harder time working with, but for it just really resonated for her, these really, you know, super tough guys sometimes, you know, big sort of buff, tatted up guys that have been released from prison that, you know, have, have been sex offenders or criminals in some kind, uh, some way, who have dealt with and are dealing with um, alcohol issues or drug issues and, and have hurt other people. And she would say, you know, some of these guys will just become kind of like teddy bears in her office, you know, as they begin to speak together and talk from a place of love and compassion and, and kindness and the safety and the privacy of that kind of space. But one of the things that really stood out for me that she said in hundreds of stories and hundreds of experiences that the one person who always stood by these guys in story after story after story, I bet you can guess who. That's right, mom. You know, and, and the moms were the ones who would f keep on loving, keep on forgiving, keep on accepting. You know, it doesn't mean without accountability, but keeping the faith, believing in these guys, you know, just the one person who would stand by them. And even if we ourselves have not had that from our actual mothers or our mothers have moved on or w whatever our cases are, we know that we know what that feels like to either express mother qualities or to receive them. We know what it feels like to have somebody hold that kind of space for us, to accept us, to love us, to keep believing in us, to hold the faith, keep the faith for us. Um, and, and to nurture us in that way, and to, to stand with us and by us. And, and, you know, even if it's not a person, because sometimes, um, you know, with people with, with our, in our humanity, we have a, a, limit, a limit to the amount of energy and time and physicality that we can offer. But in our spiritual teachings, we know that there is this endless sea available to us, this, this beautiful, sort of like those beautiful clouds and soft images that Shari created for us in that meditation that you just saw that, that, that there is this abstraction, yes, but something that we can actually feel too, this divine mother energy that is always here for us, that is always holding us and carrying us, cradling us. If we would only just let it go, right, <laughs> and let ourselves give over to that love, give over to, to being carried and, and, and cradled in that way. So normally we don't personify God, you know, we don't talk about um, in unity and new thought, we don't so much talk about as much um, God as mother or as father or, you know, in, in that personified way. But it's certainly, you know, a part of, of the, the big landscape of our teachings and understanding, right? Our first principle is about God as our source. So it's the allness of God. It's bigger than the divinity inside of us that we always speak of and the I am that we share. It's, it's not just that piece that we are a part of, but it's, it's that allness that is ever present in the universe. And it's that bigger energy that we often talk about that as, as a principle, maybe even as an it. <laughs> but today I want us to, to reach for that more personalized way of understanding God, because sometimes we do need that, that sense of God as, as our mother, that sense of God as our, our nurturing um, presence for us. And, and it is that, that, that when we tap, 
Um, and, and I think today, especially in our world right now, in the climate that we're in, it feels like we could all use a good dose of that mother love. And, and so that's what I really want to invite us into today is just to sink into some mother love, just to give over to it, to allow ourselves. You know, there's been so many goddess images over the millennia, essentially, you know, and, and many still very actively used in the Hindu religion, in the pagans, uh, pagan religion. There's a lot of goddess um, type of imagery and archetypes that are called forth when we need them. Uh, in, in our westernized um, and uh, Abrahamic religions in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, it, not as much. It, of course, Catholicism uses Mother Mary and, and has has some of that energy in it. So, and in, in Judaism, actually, El Shaddai was very much uh, the strong-breasted one, uh, is what it, it actually translates to. So, when you see in the Bible, actually, what it's been translated to is the Almighty One. So, whenever you read the Almighty One in the Bible, it actually has this Mother God kind of. Um, meaning to it. That was the, the original intention. So a lot of that, you know, mother worship from uh, that was a part of our uh, Roman and um, Greek backgrounds that has is not you know so alive and well today. But those those mythos are there. That archetype is there. That it's palpable. We can feel it. We can step into it, and we can relax into that. And we can allow sometimes that to be um, the God that we need. <laughs> and, and so that's what I'm inviting today is perhaps this resonates for you. This, and it, even if it isn't the, the goddessy kind of image, but just the idea of, of maybe a bigger mother, <laughs> a bigger a source as the, as the divine face of God, the feminine face of God. So I, I was thinking about um, it, back in the time of Isis, when Isis w reigned in, Euro in um, Egypt, the Egyptian pharaohs would sit upon the throne. And when they sat upon the throne, it was like a, a key time that it indicated sort of they'd taken up the throne, right? They had initiated themselves as the pharaoh or had been initiated as the pharaoh. But what that throne meant for them was that they had sat in the lap of the great mother. What that throne was about, well, while they may have projected an image outside of, of masculine strength and stoic, stoicism and sort of, I've got this, you know, I've got this, I've got the, the power and the control and I know how to do this. Inside what they were able to experience when they sat in that throne with the belief and the knowing and the faith that they sat in the very lap of the Divine Mother, the very lap of Isis, was that they were protected, that they were always protected, that they were always nurtured, that there was guidance available to them. And so from a spiritual standpoint, an emotional standpoint, they could feel that sense of powerful, supportive foundation when they sat upon the throne. So it gives a whole different feel, doesn't it? What if as we sat upon the places maybe where we like to meditate or even in our favorite chairs, as we just sat down and let ourselves just sort of be and, and imagine that, ah, I'm sitting now in the lap of the mother. I'm protected, I'm supported, I'm loved, I'm guided, whatever it is that we might need, nurtured. So over time in history, that... Um, Isis idea of the mother goddess, the Madonna even. Isis then held her son Horus, and there were many Madonna images of the goddess Isis with her son Horus. And then, of course, as Christianity caught on, then that was um, those were overtaken, and, and we had Mother Mary with Jesus as the new Madonna. So there's, there's many, many images over time of this, this holding, this this rocking, this um, supporting, this nurturing. And I think about now that kind of image would be really helpful for us to allow ourselves to receive, to let ourselves just kind of give in to that, and let ourselves be buoyed up by that. So for Mary, you know, there's, um, of course, many, uh, as I say, many Madonna images and many other goddess kind of Madonna images, but almost always what we see is a child, right? 
it's the it's the cherub it's the new baby it's the, it's that um, that God child uh, in the case of the, the one who is is embodying the divinity in the case of Horus and and Jesus and and of course us too because we know that we too are of that divinity but there's one image that always really moves me in a deep way and I'm sure if you've seen it before it does you too or many many people a flock to the Vatican to see it it's called the Piata by Michelangelo the famous sculptor and in this Piata you know who lays across the lap of the great mother Mary but her adult son It's his lifeless body, of course, that is strewn across her lap here. But you see in that such love, such support, such strength, such grief. It is his lifeless body after all. And far too many mothers in our society have held the the lifeless body of their sons and daughters that have died to senseless violence and many other things. And so there is grief, of course, too, but you have a sense in this of this goddessy kind of image that the strength is able to absorb it, that the love of the divine is able to absorb it. And even cut into stone, there is a sense of softness in that strength. There's a sense of comfort there. And so it's that image that I want to project for us as as our own image because it is we as the adult (laughs) that lays across the lap of the mother that can allow ourselves to be, if you will, babied in some way, and nurtured in some way, and comforted. Her love and her grief and her empathy knows no bounds, that mother goddess, whether it is Mary or another, that image that really resonates for you. And it, it, it has no limits to it. It's, it's, it's that endless level of, of support. So we can relax into that. We can give over to that. And it's hard, I think, for a lot of us to give up the sense of, I got this, the sense of control or the sense of certainty, uh, whatever it is that, you know, we're used to in our world, in our old world, in our pre-COVID world. (laughs) But, you know, in this time, in this expansive time of dealing with the coronavirus, we have certainly been in a space of uncertainty, a lot of uncertainty anyway, a lot of not knowing, a lot of living in the question. So why not, since we're already halfway there, why not just give over completely to that, you know, relax into it, allow ourselves to just be loved and comforted. And I know a lot of us, you know, we're aware of our privileges, we're aware that other people maybe can't work from home or they've lost their jobs or they're out in the front lines every day or they're dealing with, you know, illness and and maybe some of you too. I know some, some of us in our own congregation or people who are listening today are, are dealing with some of those things directly too. So there's, there's, there's comfort to be had, you know, for all of us, I think, because even if it feels like we've got a lot of things in place for ourselves, there's a, there's a lot of heaviness. You know, there's a lot to process here. There's a lot to hold here. And so today of all days, unlike many of our other messages, I want to encourage us not so much to be focused on how can I serve or how can I help or how can I give, but how can I receive? How can I just take a little time out and just, just be, you know, loved and cradled and comforted and held and nurtured, given over to that? I think it will do a lot of us a lot of good even if it's just for a day, or maybe it's for a week, or maybe it's for the rest of the stay-at-home time, or maybe it's your regular thing now. <laughs> but at least for a little while, to stop, to give over, to let go. You know, one of the things that happens when the Great Mother, when the Divine Mother holds us or, or is present for us, is, is that we are, we are loved and accepted exactly as we are. There's nothing that we need to strive for. There's nothing we need to improve upon. There's nothing we need to do better. There's not, it's not about becoming or tapping the potential within us. And I love giving those messages. That's mostly what you hear from me. But, you know, now I just want to go, you know, just set it all aside. Let's let it go. Let's, let's find that, that love and that 
um, that acceptance, that authenticity of exactly who we are, loved completely as we are. So Mark has another song for us, and it's, it's to this end very much. It's called The Mother's Heart Calls. And that mother's heart is calling all of us. Let's take a moment to surrender into that, and to let the music carry us. It's a still gray day on the coast It's like the earth is holding her breath in As a deer strolls by my window She's alert but not afraid And she stops and turns to the forest It's like the earth is singing a song she knows Suddenly she's moving Every step is soothing The mother wants her home again And it calls The mother's heart calls It's a song we all know From so long ago It will never fade away When it calls a mother's heart calls And we cannot turn away When we hear it say I love you as you are I love you as you are As you are Now the deer has gone to the forest my heart is birthing a memory My mother, she is gone And it's been so long since I thought of her like this So I play this song and I feel her strongly coming to me through the veil I'm a little baby boy, we're wrapped in joy I swear it's just like home again And it calls, a mother's heart calls It's a song we all know from so long ago It will never fade away When it calls, a mother's heart calls Cannot turn away when we hear it say, I love you as you are. I love you as you are. As you stars at night Oh I never feel alone Oh When I feel my feet upon this earth Oh I know I'm right at home The love of the mother is everywhere No matter where I am, it's everywhere It's in my heart, in my energy I can reach in and out Whenever I need to go home play this song and I feel her strongly coming to me through the veil 
I'm a little baby boy, we are wrapped in joy. I swear it's just like home again. When it calls, when the mother's heart calls, we cannot turn away when we hear it say, I love you as you are. 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 As you are. We cannot turn away when we hear her say, I love you as you are. Isn't that so true? Whenever we are loved just exactly as we are, whenever we are accepted just exactly as we are, that there's nothing more that we have to do, there's nothing more we have to prove, there's not one more thing on our to-do list, it's not about any of that, that our worth is innate, that we are perfect and whole just as we are. That's how the divine sees us. And especially this, this feel and this imagery and this sense of this Divine Mother who holds us in this way. I love the imagery and the song that we just experienced. And I want to give thanks to the Nichols family, uh, Jack Nichols, and with some contributions to John, from John and, and Jan uh, in that imagery as well. So as we just take all of this in, as we just know that we can never be separated from that great mother energy, we can never be, we know this in truth, right? We can never be separated from God. So we can never be separated from God, goddess, divine energy, mother, father, God, friend, God, it, the principle, whatever, whatever we are uh, ma- manifesting or imaging or shape-shifting in our, in our minds and in our hearts in any given moment, depending upon what it is that we are truly needing and what it is that we are seeing and offering and allowing for ourselves. So to know that it's not possible to be separated from that. So if you feel like that's not accessible for you right now, if you feel like that kind of um, mothering is not available to you right now, to just know that, that it, it, it's not possible, possible really to be disconnected except for in our own minds, in our own story, in our own sense of severance or separation or distance. And I like how Mark said in the song that, you know, he, he refers to both the sense of kind of the mother of the earth and the mother of the heavens. You know, when I look to the stars, when I feel my feet beneath the, me, the earth beneath my feet, I feel that sense of home. And so there's that, that call home, that call home into the depth of our hearts, the call home into the depth of, of our beings and um, allowing ourselves to say yes to that call to sort of give over into that call, to fall, let everything else fall away and sink in. When we lived in Santa Barbara, there was a, a retreat center, a beautiful retreat center called Casa de Maria. Unfortunately, it was really profoundly affected by fairly recent fires. But I used to facilitate retreats there. And um, there was one massage therapist in particular that any of us who got a massage from her would say this one word at some point during the massage. And the word came from her Jewish mother. I don't remember the word itself, but it meant enough. And I remember whenever she would say it, it was like I felt a sort of deep relaxation, you know, like a big sigh that would happen when she'd say, enough. So whatever that is for us, whatever the enough is, enough doing, enough uh, reaching, enough grasping, enough pushing away, enough clinging, enough trying to control, enough trying to figure it out and plan it out, enough giving, enough serving, enough. Whatever it is for you, enough. It's wrapped up in that word. And it, in that one word, if we say it in that way, it's just... Everything sort of cascades from there off of our shoulders. Enough, enough. It's really what I imagine 
if Mary was saying one word in that piata, it would be that. Enough. Enough. So we rest in that enoughness. That we are enough. That we have enough. That we, that, that we have the support that we need right here and right now. So let go of that outer enough already and rest in that inner space let it let ourselves be called home to that love to that nurturance to that comfort so it was in that particular um, casa de maria setting where i had a retreat on uh, saint Teresa of avila's work the interior castle and actually it was Brenly's boss at the time who lisa who was uh, one of the participants in the, the retreat and there was an exercise that we did and i sensed that lisa would have a hard time with it and she really did <laughs> lisa was sort of like a powerhouse woman you know really um high powered successful businesswoman kind of person who type a kind of personality she had it all under control and so the exercise as you can imagine would be especially hard um, in that situation was to say i don't know and be witnessed in that so all, you, all we did was one partner would say, I don't know, over and over again. And the other person would just witness that. Witnessing us in the I don't know as we went deeper and deeper inside to the I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And right now, that feels like an exercise that could be really helpful to us to just make friends with the fact that we don't know. We don't have all the answers now. You know what? We never did. <laughs> I think that's part of the point. We never did. And so we're wakening up to the fact that there is a bigger container for us. And that too isn't necessarily certainty, but it is a sense of security. It is a sense of safety. It is a sense of all shall be well, you know? So to, to let ourselves be in that uncertainty, to be in that I don't know, to live in the questions, is one of the great gifts we can give ourselves right now. And it's part of that giving over. It's part of what will crack the shell of that giving over. The doctor, uh, Rachel Naomi Raymond, uh, saw a lot of clients in a therapy kind of setting. And one of her clients is uh, that she tells a story of in Kitchen Table Wisdom was Jessie. So Jessie's um, mother died when she was very young. And uh, she comes to Rachel one one time for an appointment. She had missed her appointment before and she says, I'm so sorry I missed my appointment last week. She said, I had to go to the ER. She said, I had to drive myself. It was about 25 miles to the nearest hospital from my home. It's pretty remote and I was in so much pain that it took me a really long time to get there. And Dr. Raymond said, Jesse, why didn't you call someone? And she ended up spending the whole next day in the ER. And Jesse said, well, because, you know, I, I, they were all working, people are busy, I don't want to impose, you know. And plus, nobody knows anything about this condition, as if that was the only way somebody could help. And Rachel says, Jesse, you know, even children know instinctively to go to their mothers when they're hurt. And Jesse said, oh yeah, I never understood that kissing the boo-boo thing. She just doesn't help the pain. Dr. Raymond said, maybe it's not meant to help the pain, it's meant to help the loneliness. You know, our bravado, our sort of, our, I got this, I'm going to figure it out, I'm going to do it myself, I'm going to, you know, it's the very old paradigm that we have been living with in, in very current times. And I say it's an old paradigm because it's been around for a long time and it's this idea that we can do it all ourselves, that we got this, it's just, it's simply not true. It might be true in a moment or in a given situation, sure. But overall, we keep getting shown and told over, <laughs> overall, time and time again, that we're better together than alone, as Mark Nepo says, that we need each other, that we need a sense of, of team and collaboration. And so the story touches on that other piece, you know, that, that lonely piece. And I just, you know, the, the, the heart of the mother in me aches for people who are alone right now, who are 
Um, some of you are totally at peace with that. I've seen some of you online and you love this sort of hermitage time. <laughs> But others, not so much, you know, there's an ache there, there's a, a, a loneliness for, for touch, for company, and, um, and it just extends some love to that, you know, and, and, and want to offer you that, that love that is inside of us, that is always there to find ways to tap it. Some of you have seen online rocking in hammocks. And everybody comments, everybody else, it seems, comments who's on those calls like, oh, wow, that looks so nice. And the person's on the hammock and there's sunlight all around them and you just kind of are rocking with them in a way, you know. If you don't have a hammock, maybe you have a rocking chair. And if you don't have something to rock, maybe you just have a really soft place to create for yourself. And you could play that Cradle Me, Cradle Me song or some other song by a favorite artist and just let yourself be loved, let yourself be held, let yourself be nurtured. Maybe take a warm bath and feel the, the sensual touch of that experience of being in a warm bath. You know, whatever it is that might feed you at that, this time, there are things. You know, Mother Nature herself. I was thinking about when Marilyn Pat from Unity of Columbia was with one of us on one of our, um, well, actually many of them, but one of our uh, day walks, our nature day walks. And... Um, at the time, Marilyn Pat was almost 80, and she said she had never, ever been in like wild nature. She'd only been in parks. She grew up in New York City, so she was very familiar with Central Park and other parks. She said, I'd never really just thought about it, even going out into nature and spending some time. And that day, she was so loved and nurtured. She found a tree, and the way that that tree was just the way it had been worn in time. It was a felled tree, so it was a big branch. And, and she, it was like a cradle. And she just sat in that tree, she said, for hours, just looking up at the sky and watching the clouds. Never had she given herself that kind of nurturance, that kind of love, or even known to find it in nature. So maybe you can find that in a grassy space or bring a blanket or sit under a tree and feel the support of that tree. So for any of us, I think, sinking into that kind of mother nature, that kind of cradle, will um, really serve us at this time. You know, if we just think about what children need, what do children need? They need safety. They need a sense of safety and security. And they need a sense of, a, and they need attention, and that kind of loving, kind attention. So we can provide that for ourselves give ourselves that sense of warmth and security, that sense of being taken care of, that sense of being cradled and comforted in some way. In Psalm 131, it says, the soul at rest in God is like a child in its mother's embrace. The soul at rest in God is like a child in its mother's embrace. That's really what we're talking about today and feeling into and what I encourage you into to give to yourself as a gift on this Mother's Day. Sometimes we just need to surrender it all and give it all over to spirit, the allness of spirit. And that's where, we're, where we are today. Give it all over to this great mother, to this divine mother energy. I'm holding a prayer for the collective now, and I want to invite you, maybe this will resonate for you too, this prayer of, of a prayer to, if you will, to the Divine Mother. It spells out Mother, and it goes like this. Mother, oh, the pain. Teach us to feel it and to release it. Heal humanity. All of humanity's heart. Equity evermore restored. Mother, oh the pain, teach us to feel and release it. Heal humanity's heart. Equity evermore restored. And for us individually, to let ourselves just be comforted, to comfort ourselves. Maybe if you are sharing a home with somebody, you could provide some of that kind of love and comfort to one another. Maybe just some loving touch, a back rub or a foot rub or some kindness to one another. So let's lay down our burdens. Let's give it all over to the Divine Mother on this special day. 
let's let ourselves just relax into the lap of the Divine Mother. I invite you to speak this affirmation with me and to carry this in your heart. Together, I lay down my burdens and rest in the comfort of the Great Mother. Happy Mother's Day. May you find comfort for yourself today. And God bless all the mothers. And so it is.